Hey, and thank you for clicking play. And welcome back to part two of looking at how this A1200 has turned out. And what we're gonna do in this episode is look at the technical achievements. Again, knowing this is not my forte. But first of all, let's just have a look at this on the desk where you guys see it most of the time. And hopefully you can agree, every video is different because diffuse lighting, ambient lighting makes such a difference. Even though I try and balance the lighting in this room, it's very hard. Yes, I have got my selfie light. <laughs> on on bright white just to accentuate how this has come out no no hiding it um but look seriously this has come out fantastically look i don't mind full disclosure what i had to do when i did the before and after because those were weeks apart um was I, I filmed the, the second one in exactly the same location in this room under the same lights that I filmed the before, but it still came out darker because it was a different time of day. So what I had to do, and if you look back at that first video, was try and match the background color. And what I did was the top of the cardboard box, the A1200 box, that's where I was trying to color match at that point. I'd used a paper for white balance as well. It's really difficult to do when you're just filming on your phone. So at the end of the day, trust me, this looks so much cleaner and newer than it originally did. And I'm so happy with how it turned out. But there were a few technical issues, as you know. So one was the hard drive light wasn't working and the floppy drive wasn't working at all. That was pretty much it. That was pretty much it. But what I'll also show you is this is the 16 gigabyte card that Godfrey had in here. And I'll show you what's in there now. Well, in fact, it's one of these. Okay, it's one of these eight gig ones. Now, um, I'll tell you up front now. I haven't been able to get this working. So I think this isn't an Amiga kit one. Um, I don't think. Um... So I don't think that's the issue. I tried installing the software that Mike gave me and it didn't actually help. Um, so I may have to buy a, maybe a different adapter, not sure. So let's just get that out of the way now. Let's have a look under the hood. Let's remind ourselves again, hard drive light wasn't working. Floppy drive was also not working. Let's see what we've got inside this machine now. I haven't put the screws back in yet mainly because there will be some compact flash fl uh, changing around. Now, this keyboard had already had a new membrane fitted by um, Godfrey, so that work had already been done. Um, these lights are now back to the originals. The ones that were in here were these aftermarket ones that Godfrey gave me, um, but the lights weren't the problem. The floppy drive on this one, the floppy drive light on this one wasn't working, but that was just a loose wire, so I fixed that. This wasn't the problem. The problem was, with the hard drive light not working, was the compact flash adapter that was in it, which is this one. Now, if you do have one of these, um, don't worry about that mess. That's just where there was an insulation pad stuck on there, which I've now stuck onto the, the one that's in there. Um, so basically, if you do have one of these and the hard drive light doesn't work, there is a fix you can do. I'll find the link and I'll put it in the description. I think, I've forgotten the guy's name now, a European guy. Jan Bida, I think, is the one that did a video. I think it's Jan Bida that did a video on how to fix these. There's two possible issues. One, the hard drive light stays on. The other one is the hard drive light doesn't work at all. I had the issue where the hard drive light doesn't work at all. I'll find the link, I'll put it in the description. So, but what I did, so I could use this in another machine is what I'm saying short term. But what I did was I bought another one from retrokit.com.au um, right here in Perth. Fantastic, if you're in Australia, do hit up RetroKit because success of businesses like that rely on us using them. Let's move the keyboard carefully out the way and just have a look at what we've installed here then. And I don't want to mess up this brand new membrane. So at the moment, still got the accelerator in there. So ACA um, 1233N, individual computers, um, and that has 128 meg of RAM on it. Fantastic card, absolutely loving it. But for the testing I want to do in the future to compare to my 386, that will actually be getting pulled out 
temporarily just to see how these things perform stock that's the idea and in here so here's the new ide to compact flash adapter from retrokit.com.au um he doesn't make them he buys them in and sells them locally so it's more convenient um and he also does amiga cases all sorts of stuff um keycaps just hit him up, mate. If you're in Australia, hit up retrokit.com.au for goodness sake. Um, so that's in there. And I've got one of the blank compact flash cards in there as well, which is also from, uh, I bought from Retrokit because he knows these ones work in Amigas. So fantastic. You'll also notice the floppy drive is back in place as well. So let's put this back together and let's see what works and what doesn't. Okay, so powering on, watch the lights. So, plugging in the power. <laughs> uh, do I cut that out? No, let's leave it in. Plugging in the power. <laughs> Okay, let's turn it on, <laughs> watch the lights. Power light, that always worked anyway. Hard drive light, we have a hard drive activity light. Fantastic. And what you'll also see here, he says, angling up is a completely fresh install of Workbench. So that's on that compact flash card, and that is thanks to these discs that I got from Marvin Drugsma. Okay, so I've actually installed this all fresh from original, obviously I made a copy of the install disc from original media. So thank you Marvin, retro 8-bit shop in Europe. Um, they worked fantastically. What I will do is I will do a separate video on doing a fresh install. Now, the install that was on the other uh, compact flash card from Godfrey, that had all kinds of extras installed. And I wasn't experiencing Workbench 3, how it is stock. And that is so important to the experimentation I wanna do going forwards. So I will be doing that um, on this image here. But I just wanna show you, it's so nice having a nice clean install. This is the first time I'd ever installed Workbench from scratch, Workbench 3, because obviously I only had an Amiga, that was Workbench 1.3, and uh, Amiga 500, sorry, that was Workbench 1.3, and I didn't have a hard drive. So there you go. So one thing I have added to this is sysinfo, because you can just copy it across. So we can see that the accelerator and the RAM are all working. There we go, it says, up on the right hand side there it says 030 that's the accelerator running at 42.7 megahertz and here's our speed here's a standard a1200 here and here's our speed much faster than a standard a1200 and we have where's the ram i don't know here we go 126 meg total size that's not right 130 basically 130 meg two meg on board and then 128 on the card Fantastic. Quit that. And the other thing I've taken the time to install here, because everything is now working, is um, in games, Gloom. Okay. And that was installed because that's it's not WHD load. That is hard drive installable directly from the floppy disks. More about that at the end. So do stay tuned for the end of this video. 
Now the other thing that wasn't working was the floppy drive and thanks to Shane for recapping the floppy drive we did have to do some jiggery pokery with moving the caps around because he did put slightly bigger caps in um, lying on their side they were the same height as the original caps but I just had to bend them carefully into a location that they weren't interfering with anything inside the machine but does the floppy drive work? <laughs> Oh dear. I'm putting one of my favourite discs in, Shane. This is Xenon 2 from Amiga Format, Issue 3. You know how special this disc is and that issue is to me. <laughs> Does it work? <sighs> okay. Putting it in. Floppy disc light is working. Look at that. Look at that. Here we go. Amiga format. That's reading that disc absolutely fine. And of course, well, I've kind of given it away, haven't I? Because I told you I installed the friggin' operating system from original discs. <laughs> so I kind of gave that, gave that away. Anyway, uh, demo corner. I've covered this disc before. There we go. And this disc is very special. Program fail, wait for activity to... Shut up, it's fine. Uh, we'll do reboot, because I wanted to reboot anyway, because on this disc, of course, you have... <laughs> it's now got a software failure. <laughs> Why has it got a software failure? Don't tell me this demo doesn't work on an A1200. It's, it's possible. This is all unscripted. It's all unplanned. Oh, maybe I just need to click the mouse. Jump cut. There you go, mega blast. You can't go past that, fantastic. So this floppy drive is working absolutely fine. Awesome! Right, let's eject that puppy, give it a reboot. And what I'd love to see is just a quick look at. Now, see, it does still sometimes do this. I'm glad I'm capturing this warts and all because it does still sometimes say, hey, guess what? You've got a disc in here, but I don't, but there's nothing on it. And now it's, now it's behaving. Maybe because the disc was still slightly in there. So I've still got a bit of an issue with the disc presence sensor in here. Um, but if it annoys me, I just shove a disc in and it shuts up. Look, see, it's, it's thinking, it's farting. See, and it will do that for a while. Look, and then it says DF0. But if I put a disc in, then it can happily read the disc. So to be honest, that's my fix, sod it. Um, but yeah, I'm just very keen to, you know, have a play. And again, seriously, Ryan, thank you so much, because this is so cool. Now, I'm not used to Workbench. What I will do is I'm gonna do a video on how I installed Workbench from scratch, because I think that would be useful to you. And what I'm gonna be doing, now that I've got a fresh install of Workbench, is go through, um, Doug Compton's, Douglas Compton's videos on Workbench. He's got an excellent playlist. Um, spent a lot of time explaining the ins and outs of Workbench. And um, so I'll link you in the, in the uh, description of this video um, because I'm now gonna be going through that. I didn't spend a lot of time in Workbench on my A500. That's the fact, because why would you? 
Whereas now that I've got it a fresh install on an A1200, I want to get to know it a lot better. So thank you, Doug. I have had a ch chat with Doug and he said it's fine to credit him and link to his video. So I will do that. Um, I'll link you to his playlist because that's what I'm going to be learning from myself. But this, this is so cool. And it's so important for me to get to know these things. Damn it. As they should be. You know, what an A1200 can do out of the box. I know I've got the accelerator in here currently. Look at this, a first person shooter on an Amiga. This is so cool. Love it. But this is a topic for a whole nother video. So look, <laughs> it's so great having this machine up and running again. Fresh install of Workbench and fresh install of Gloom, like I mentioned. And Gloom, by the way, was one of the games donated to me by Ryan. That's hard drive installable. As long as you've got more than two meg of RAM, it will happily play it. If you've got the stock two meg, you still have to play it off floppy drive, even if you've installed it onto the hard drive. So thank you, Ryan. Seriously, it was the first game I grabbed. Uh, in fact, it's the only game so far hard drive installed on this machine because I've been so keen to give that a go. Even though I have the WHD load on the old image. This is great. Seriously, appreciate that so much, mate. Really do. Thanks for watching. They didn't shoot at me. They must know I'm making a video. Cheers. Oh well, nobody stayed around to watch that bit anyway, right?